Here's a challenge for you. 80 years ago, we learned that the atom could be split. 70 years ago, we learned that the secrets of the genetic code had finally been uncovered. It's been more than a half a century, so here's the challenge. Can you name a scientific revolution of comparable significance that's happened since that time? I don't mean a technological revolution like the iPhone or the self-driven car. I mean a fundamental scientific revolution that's uh, succeeded, already succeeded in changing the world just as profoundly as the revolutions I mentioned. Go ahead and think. I'll, I'll wait for a moment. Uh, having trouble? Why so? Have all fundamental scientific problems uh, already been solved? Well, the reason may surprise you. I'll illustrate with a heartbreaking story of a Hungarian physician who discovered something that uh, it just didn't sit well with his colleagues. 150 years ago, Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis landed a position in one of Europe's most prestigious hospitals in Vienna. What he saw in the obstetrics ward really shocked him. Following routine childbirth, women frequently develop serious infections and many of them died. The cause Semmelweis suspected was the doctors. The doctors followed a daily routine. Each morning, they'd begin by examining women who had died the night prior. Then they would attend to the women about to deliver. Semmelweis wondered, might those doctors have picked up something toxic during the autopsies, transforming it to the obstetric patients during the internal exams? Could those tainted hands have caused the next set of deaths? Remember, this was before Pasteur. Microbes were yet to be discovered. Semmelweis tested his speculation, and before conducting any exams, he washed his hands. And the results were dramatic. New mothers departed on their feet instead of in coffins. Semmelweis's discovery seemed so rich with clinical promise. Well, you'd think that a discovery of that magnitude would bring instant acclaim. Uh, many lives could be saved. But no, his colleagues resisted. They saw the implied necessity for procedural change as a change to their authority. They resented Semmelweis's audacity. In retribution for the, such disrespect, his senior colleagues saw fit to deem Semmelweis mentally ill, nuts. He was promptly committed to an insane asylum where he soon died. Sadly, that distinguished hospital's routines remain unchanged. Young mothers continue to depart in coffins. The Semmelweis narrative repeats again and again, um, snuffing out potentially groundbreaking scientific advances. You may think the experiences of Semmelweis are irrelevant ancient history, but today's system of doing science only exacerbates the problem. Today's scientists need financial support. And who evaluates their applications is the field's experts, the very people whose ideas may be under direct challenge. So the outcome is predictable, failure. With no funding, there could be no experiments. And without revolutionary experimental findings, we maintain the status quo. And that's the reason you had trouble identifying even a single modern scientific revolution of the caliber of those I mentioned. Fresh ideas get quickly snuffed out. But not at the Institute for Venture Science. The Institute supports disruptive scientists who have the guts to challenge conventional thinking. According to the New York Times, um, disruptive science has diminished steadily over the past half century. And that means fewer scientific revolutions, uh, few solutions to the world's many problems. Those desperately needed breakthroughs 
are the reason for creating the Institute for Venture Science. It's been uniquely designed from the ground up to achieve those breakthroughs. And to find out how exactly, please check our website. And please consider contributing to our efforts. The IVS welcomes your input, volunteers, collaborators, scientists, and especially prospective donors who could really make a difference and at the same time leave a permanent legacy in their name. Help us enrich the world at ivscience.org.